Hello, my name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety, and I'm thrilled to be here today for this opening night special event Q&A with the YouTube Originals docu-series, Demi Lovato, Dancing with the Devil. At this time, please join me in welcoming today's guests who brought this powerful series to life. I want to start with the documentary subject, Demi Lovato. We have director and executive producer, Michael D. Ratner, and global head of original content at YouTube, Suzanne Daniels. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Congratulations on a wonderful series. Um, Demi, you are so honest and vulnerable in this. And talking about your 2018 overdose, I, I learned so many things that surprised me. At what point did you decide to tell your story and to do so with complete unvarnished honesty? I knew that the moment I woke up in the hospital that um, I, I knew I wanted to share my story and set the record straight about what was going on because there were so many stories floating around when I was in the hospital, what had happened. And then it seemed like as time went on, people, you know, didn't get the full story and they also didn't see how um, how bad it was, I guess. And and I, in order to show my fans how far I've come, I wanted to show them, you know, the full truth. And as painful and as uncomfortable as it was at times, it also, I think, really is going to benefit so many people. And that's the ultimate reason why I've decided to share my story. I mean, I, I was shocked. I thought I knew the story. I, I had no idea three strokes and a heart attack uh, just completely blew me away. Yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely, I mean, and there were even other things that happened and, and it was, it was a lot, it was heavy. And I'm, I'm really grateful that I survived and I definitely feel like I have a purpose. Oh, absolutely. And Michael, uh, what interested you in being part of this project and how did you sort of come aboard? Was it brought to you? Did you go to her? Actually, Demi saw the series that I just directed prior, which was the Justin Bieber Seasons uh, doc. And Demi and I knew each other for a couple of years, which I think actually ultimately led to us hitting the ground running so fast and mm -hmm. that trust, that inherent trust. I think norm normally there's that, I always say there's this time period where it starts as interviews and you're like feeling it out and then it eventually gets to conversations. I feel like the moment we started, one, Demi was so ready to tell the story and it was cathartic, but two, we had that rapport, knew each other. I directed Demi in another series that we do, a Pretty Big Deal with Ashley Graham, and I think that was just the tip of the iceberg, like mm -hmm. a few little Easter eggs of what was to come. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when, when I knew Demi liked that series and was, was interested in telling her story, I couldn't think of something I wanted to do more. Um, she's such a genuine person and she uh, really wants to help so many people. So the willingness to use her story and her experience to help others, uh, the, the, very, the very thought of that was so exciting to me. And I really just wanted to create the platform for her to tell her truth. And I think we, uh, we pulled it off. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Um, Suzanne, YouTube Originals' relationship with Demi goes back to 2017 with Simply Complicated. What's sort of the, the secret to the successful partnership and what made you the best home for Dancing with the Devil? Well, it was actually 2016 because we bought it in 2016. So we've been working with, um, we aired it in 2017. So we've been working with uh, Demi for a while. I loved Simply Complicated and the, re the reaction to Simply Complicated complicated on YouTube was incredible. Just really positive from the fans, uh, loved it. Um, you know, you use the words honest and vulnerable, Janelle, and um, Demi was honest and vulnerable and simply complicated. And so after simply complicated, um, Demi and I were in a meeting and she uh, told us she was going on a world tour. And I basically can't get enough of Demi Lovato um, and wanted to, um, do a doc, a, a second doc that was following the world tour. But um, obviously that didn't happen because things got more complicated um, for Demi. Um, and then when the opportunity arose to um, tell the story that she had, the journey that she had been through um, since the tour, um, of course we wanted to do that. And I mean, Demi has uh, almost 20 million subscribers to her channel on YouTube. Um, Simply Complicated has almost 40 million views. 
um, it's uh, it sort of it's, it falls into the category of no brainer for to me to work with Demi and Michael, who um, did such an amazing job on Seasons. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Seasons, the the Justin Bieber docu series. Um, Michael, what did you learn from that experience that you took into Dancing with the Devil? What, what, what were the things that you knew you wanted to do or not do with this series? Because it feels, you know, it's a docuseries, but it feels very fresh and original, unlike one, one I've ever seen before. While there's similarities, I mean, both are global mu superstar musicians. They're, they're completely different, different individuals with totally different journeys. And I think what really interested me. I mean, when Demi and I had this first conversation, we talked about, would this work, right? Would the, would the visions align? Um, Dancing with the Devil is about a moment. And from there, peeling back how we got there. And we needed Demi to be all in to tell every piece of that. And ultimately, it was this collision course to this moment in time. And I think that when you create a story that is centered around one moment, but ultimately unpack why we got there. And you have somebody who's really willing to do the work themselves to identify the traumas and, and do the self work to ultimately allow herself to share it with the world to then help others and to say it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to talk about these things. That's what to me made this so special. It was how do we go and identify a moment and from a storytelling perspective in this nonlinear capacity talk about this collision course coming together. You know, Seasons wasn't really like that. Seasons was the build up to an album and ultimately talking about the couple years prior. It wasn't a moment in time. And I just thought that, you know, w once Demi and I had a uh, similar vision for this and we wanted to identify, you know, that, that what we refer to now as Miracle Day, um, you know, a a as, as the, the crux of this story and, and, and build around that, that's when I knew that we could really do something special that, and I appreciate you saying that, that felt fresh and felt different and really felt special. Uh, Demi, a lot of celebrities have very manicured images that they sort of project on social media. And there's a moment in the series when your friend is being interviewed and, and he kind of checks. He says, are, are we talking about this? You know, um, were you always comfortable with the idea of being so open and honest? And did you surprise even yourself in some of these conversations? I... I definitely surprised myself when talking about how this path hasn't been squeaky clean, how 2018 wasn't the end all be all of that journey. And um, and so I, and I didn't expect to be that honest on camera. I knew I was gonna talk about um, 2018. I knew I was gonna talk about 2020, but like, I just, I didn't know how honest I was gonna be with 2019 and I think I really surprised not only myself but my friends too when I decided to be that honest. And so, and that's the main point behind this docu-series is yes, I've done a lot of work on myself, but luckily, you know, I had the courage to just come clean so that I could hold myself accountable. And that's the thing is this whole journey, it's ever evolving. I'm not sitting in front of you claiming to be fixed and to be the poster child for recovery. And I'm not that anymore. And I don't want to be that. I don't want to take that on. But what I will say is this path that I have taken has helped me so much. And um, and I want to share everything with the world so that hopefully it can help others as well. I mean, the series is also filled with equally frank conversations from important people in your life. Did you find they were pretty willing to participate or was there any hesitation on anyone else's part? No, everybody was very, very supportive. I think everyone in my life, especially everyone that you saw on camera, um, I think th the only person that was really hesitant was um, Danny. We, we hadn't spoken in that long and we hadn't seen each other since everything. And, you know, she got treated really poorly in, um, in the media and, and I wanted to like give her a chance to really tell her story and, um, since I had just now com become comfortable with sharing mine, I wanted to do it together and let the world know that like, hey, she wasn't a part of this and she's a really good person. To that end, actually, Michael, how do you get people to open up? Do you build that trust over time? Do you get to do a lot of interviews with them or do you usually have just like one day and, and you know, you have to sort of hope that they open up? 
It's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I always talk to the person directly prior. So, you know, well, whether that's a <clears throat> nowadays a Zoom, there is that sort of um, key moment where you, where you go and explain to somebody that you're not there to make a salacious hit piece in any capacity. And also, I do think it helps to have a body of work. You know, we've never done that. I've never done that. And I think that if you sit there and you explain to somebody your agenda, through and through. This is what the project is about. This is what we're looking to do. And if you're going to stay true to that, um, there's no reason that they shouldn't partake. Uh, and if they choose to opt out, that's their prerogative. But I think that we've had great success because we're not looking for any aha, got you moments. I think we're looking for people to really partake if they would like to. And ultimately, a lot of the people that were involved with this project were people that loved Emmy. And this project was the ultimate catharsis. Like I said before, I use that word a lot because I think this is liberating. I mean, even like now, Demi feels lighter knowing this is coming. The world hasn't even seen it yet. The day of the trailer, we were texting back and forth, just like, wow, this feels so good. You know, I mean, this has been a long time in the making and also made this project during a pandemic. It was a weird time. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, finally releasing it to the world and there's a lot that's not in that trailer that people are about to find out that I think is gonna be, uh, it's gonna create a lot of conversations. So I think that what we put out to the world is what we told the participants it was going to be. I hold that responsibility very um, close to my heart and I take it very, very seriously that somebody is going on camera to talk to me and put their reputation on the line. You know, ultimately this piece has all of the voices that Demi would want in it and I think that that's why it's such a holistic view into where she's at today. Michael, you mentioned that you and Demi knew each other uh, going into this project. But were you as close as you appear to be now? You know, it, there's something about, the, I mean, the way Demi allowed me in to tell the story, and I think now, I mean, I, I consider her a very dear friend and somebody who, it's rare, we talk about this, but you're able to be real genuine friends and work together, it's very special. And um, that comes on the Friday nights after Friday night, after Friday night, reviewing the cuts and talking about the, the, the meaning of life and why things are in the cut and what's important to her. Um, those sessions when you're not on camera and a process like this, I mean, really 12 months, um, that's when you get a bond where, you know, you could do a weird, awkward Zoom like this and you're, people can yeah. tell that you, you've become incredibly close. It's just, it's the process. Um, and I did feel us get closer throughout the process and the interviews got more in depth. And I say interviews, the, the conversations, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's certainly how I feel. Yeah, 1000%, I feel like we were friends before and, and we'd gone to dinner with, the, with groups and seen each other here and there. But, you know, I think now there's just a different level to our friendship that I'm going to be forever grateful for. To have somebody next to me in this process who not only listened to every word that I said, but fully experienced me as a person. That was, that was so meaningful and valuable to me. And I, I'm never gonna forget this. And then not only that, but then he killed it. Like, <laughs> did such a good job. So I'm so, so grateful and so excited. And yeah, it's, it's definitely brought us closer. We killed it. Yeah. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Suzanne, from the perspective of YouTube originals, uh, were you sort of involved in any of the production or post-production or did you just sort of turn it over and, and give Michael carte blanche? We uh, had worked with Michael, obviously, um, on seasons and we had a very trusting relationship with Michael. And um, and obviously we've worked with Demi before and, um, and as I said, super fan. Um, so uh, there was a lot of trust in, and but at the same time, there was a lot of interaction about, um, uh, I had a meeting, Demi was there virtually, but I, it was one of the last meetings I had before everything went virtual. Um, I, and I was in Scooter's office and, um, and Demi was on FaceTime and she talked about what she wanted to do. And, um, and she committed then to um, being super honest. And I knew she would because um, she'd come across so well, beautifully and simply complicated. But um, really in the five years I've known her, uh, no one's come uh, dealt, dealt with the kind of intense challenges she has and grown as much from it. 
as Demi Lovato. And, um, and she was excited about Michael. Uh, so it was just, there was a lot of trust going through it. And, um, and as uh, cuts and dailies came in, we just loved everything we saw. So there was, it was, there was not a big notes process. Did you always know it was going to be four episodes at this under 30 minute length? I think we discussed potentially different formats, but at the end of the day, that's one of the things I actually love about working at YouTube as opposed to MTV and the networks I worked at. None of my projects have to be in a 22 minute, 44 minute, 90 minute slot format. We can do what's best for the content in terms of formatting. And this was obviously what was best for this content. Yeah, the story really dictates what the time will be, so to speak, which I re really appreciate. That's true of all of our projects. Yeah. Um, I would love to just ask some logistical questions, like how long did you shoot? How much footage did you end up with when it came to editing? I'd also just love to go back just for one second, because Suzanne is being wildly humble. Um, her team and, and Suzanne and, and the YouTube Originals team, Alex uh, Piper and Cara Casey, I and mean, I can't tell you how many phone calls I've had with Cara Casey at the most odd 4.30 a.m. and then calling her at 9 p.m. That whole team is so supportive and they do give good notes and they give perspective, but it is, it's, it's this blend of carte blanche and also here's, here's some thoughts and, and run it by Demi or what do you think about this? And I think that rapport, because it was the same team, uh, it was built on seasons. We did next chapter together, and now we've done uh, Dancing with the Devil. And I think they understood the gravity of what we we're building here. But all credit to to YouTube Originals for the way that they do help run the process. And I'm not just saying that because they write the check. I'm saying that because they really do a great job. And Suzanne has put together an incredible team. And you know, I remember being at SB Projects with Suzanne talking about getting the band back together. And Suzanne had said, "Well, what length do you think this will be?" And Demi and I had talked about length. And everybody really did trust me, which I appreciated in finding that length. Until, until the very end, I wasn't sure exactly where episodes were gonna land. I wanted the freedom, because YouTube is unique in that way, to find it. And ultimately, you know, the four-part series felt great because we thought of it as this moment, right? Where there was so much to unpack. The idea of it being one straight shot through there was going to be too much to dissect, so we thought about having it in four parts where you could really have a moment to have conversations and provoke dialogue around all of the different things that happen in each episode. I mean, there were times when Demi would tell me something and I was like, one, I, I'm so grateful that you want to tell that here and use this platform to tell that part of the story, but that adds another 10 minutes. Like, we'll need to explain that properly, and we had the flexibility to do so. So that leads me to your question. Uh, a lot of footage, a lot of, I, I joke, if, you, if you're going to direct a Demi Lovato project, you, be, you better be ready to shoot and keep shooting. Um, so much growth, so much happens uh, on the day to day. And she'll call me and say, I really think you should get uh, um, this one thing. Well, what's that one thing? And she says, well, I'm gonna chop all my hair off. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> continuity, <laughs> continuity, you know. Um, and and, and that, that process was so fun. And there was, there was some of the uh, charm of impromptu filming was killed because you need to have testing protocols in place and you need to go and really think these things through. That said, um, Demi was always giving us warning and saying, I want to add this or I want to shoot that. So we shot a lot. We shot for um, around a year. And then of course we inherited some of the footage from 2018 from that tour and we cut it all together and um, really proud of what is in the cut. And uh, there's a whole other doc we can put together with what hit the cutting room floor. That's great too. I am actually curious about that. Was there anything you wanted to include, but for any reason, you know, sometimes it just doesn't fit into the narrative you're telling that that you couldn't include? I will I will go ahead and say, I definitely think that there's go there's going to be more in the future. Like I I don't think that it stops at the end of this docu series. You know what I'm saying? It, like like Raddy said, you got to be ready to keep filming. So. Suzanne, we're ready. Um, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Okay, cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I was absolutely thrilled that everything that we talked about really made it into the series. And there wasn't, there's not a part of 2020, 2019, 2018 that I feel like I left out and didn't get to say. Like, you did such an incredible job of really fitting everything in that I wanted to say and painting a clear picture to everyone about who I am today and where I'm at. 
yeah, there, there were these, I don't want to call them hard conversations, just incredibly detailed conversations where Demi was explaining how so much of her life is linked and how certain things led to other things. So it would have been a disservice to telling the whole picture to leave out chunks. And it was a puzzle to figure out, but we would, she would say, I really think you gotta figure out how to include X, Y, or Z. And then we would, and then there's a domino effect and it would change a cut, but we did, we got it all in there. There was one, you asked uh, if there's anything that I wish made it. There's, a <laughs> there's one deleted scene, I actually have to show you this, which I think we're talking about putting behind the paywall as like extra bonus content, where uh, Demi's talking about her love of the Mexican pizza from Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, but it's so good, and it's. It, I know exactly what you're talking about. Incredible, and it's this fun scene. And the reason I say I wanted it in there, and is because it shows her personality. There's, this doc is so heavy at times, and we do have fun stuff in there, and you you learn all the many sides to Demi. But um, that scene needs to live on its own as a as a little uh, ancillary piece of content. It's really fun, and also it just it. it she explains beyond just it being delicious, why it does have some real significance to you. And yeah. it's a really fun scene. Oh, you were speaking my language. I was heartbroken <laughs> when they took it off the I menu. held a funeral, okay? I held a funeral. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you're, she's not kidding. She's not. Yeah. Imagine this. Yeah. I'll wow. send you the scene. You have to watch yeah, the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Demi, it sounds like you were involved during post-production, but what was it like when you finally sat down and really watched the series for the first time? And, you know, all these people who are so important to you, who, who so clearly care and love you so deeply, speaking so passionately about you. <laughs> we both just took a deep breath. <laughs> we both remembered what that day was like. Um, we watched the first episode together and First of all, the first uh, three seconds in, I'm seeing the footage from my Rock and Rio performance, and I see the, the, you know, I'm going through the backstage and on the golf cart and the life that w I was living before COVID, and I just started crying <laughs> because I was like, I miss my fans. Like I haven't performed in so long, and I'm and I miss them, and I miss it, and um, and then I was like, okay, 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 I'm I'm getting it together, all right, we're, we're good to go. And then I think after watching the whole episode all the way through, I, I actually had a bit of a physical reaction where I was like shaking and like um, breathing heavily, just felt like a little lightheaded. And it was because this is so emotional for me. This is so moving and so, um, I, I was terrified to be honest, like I, I knew it's what I wanted to do and I knew it that I was going to, but it didn't take away the fact that I was terrified the entire time. Um, and even watching it back, knowing that the world was going to see this, I was terrified. And, but then the trailer came out and the outpouring of love and support from my fans and, and other people has just been so remarkable and moving that Ugh, it's just been, it's been so beautiful and I just can't wait for everyone to see the full project. I'll add, it was, it was really quite something to uh, walk over and put in the first episode. She hasn't seen anything yet. And three seconds in, she paused and starts crying hysterically. And I was like, this is going well. I was yeah, like, yeah. I think, I think I killed this one. This is, I was yeah. like, well, but it was, yeah. it was just powerful. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I remember we were, I was, I, I had two ready that night. And mm -hmm. after one, she said, I think we should stop after. And she was like, I need to see the second, but I don't think I can. Yeah. So I, we, we, we paused and, and we, uh, talked a bit about the first one. It was a rough cut. And, and then we watched the first and the second together the mm -hmm. next time so it would lead in nicely. But those were really powerful and important parts of the process to just, you know, not have all the noise and cameras and people around and, and move on to the next scene, but just be able to talk. And I think that's where some of the friendship came into play because it was just like, it's a Friday night, let's just watch and talk about it and decide what we need to do next. It also was nice to have something to do on a Friday night <laughs> in COVID. It was our big you know, activity, it was, it was our big outing. Yeah, 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 I just got a theater, so I'm like, yeah. yeah, let's go watch it, my theater, yeah. it's a big night. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Suzanne, YouTube is the largest platform for music consumption. It already has a massive audience. Can you talk a little about the synergy of airing and promoting a docuseries like this and the impact it can have with so many viewers that it can reach? Um, 
yeah, as I said earlier, this is this was a slam dunk project um, to do um, because a, a we know that Demi's engaged and uh, and her fans are engaged on the platform and in her in, in her channel, um, and so there's a there's just a built in uh, fan base that's there that that can't wait um, for for anything that Demi does for the, for the, her next song for um, uh, her next story. Um, and, uh, and more, and moreover than that, you know, um, uh, mental health is a, is a big agenda for YouTube, um, uh, as something we want to, um, we want to help provide content for meaningful content that can resonate with our viewers and help our viewers. And a project like this really, um, is a beacon project, um, for many ways for mental health. And so we are excited on so many levels to get behind it and market it and for it to premiere in March. I actually want to talk about that because the, the series is so revealing and honest, and I do think it's going to help people talk about mental health and addiction in ways that they might not have before and, and sort of let us see that we're, we're always a work in progress. Um, what is it you hope people take away from this show, uh, you know, in revealing so much about your story, which is very personal in some ways, I think it'll also feel universal to a lot of people. What I want people to take away from this docu-series is you don't have to conform to what other people want you to be, want you to do. Um, you can choose your life you can set it up the way that you want to. And with the right people around you, the right support system, um, you can thrive and you aren't your lowest moments. You know, I, I there was a, a thing at the end on the, what do you call those? The Final card? Yeah, the, the call to action. Yeah. Um, you know, it says you are not your lowest moments. And that, when I saw that, I was so excited to see that because it, it's, after watching that, I want everyone to take that away from the series. I mean, obviously the series has some tra tragic moments, but I feel that it is ultimately just such a beautiful story. And I think people will walk away um, really kind of feeling inspired. Um, and I want to remind everyone that the first two episodes will premiere for free on Demi Lovato's YouTube channel on Tuesday, March 23rd, with new episodes to be released on each of the next two Tuesdays. I want to congratulate you on a beautiful series and thank you so, so, so much for being thank here. Thank you so much thank for you having guys. us. Thank you guys, we appreciate it. Thank you.